Here's everything you need to know when it comes to getting your dogs registered, getting paperwork for your dogs, and all the different types of registries. What's going on, Bully fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, bringing you another quick episode of Breeder's Hacks. So today, um, I've been getting a lot of questions about registration for dogs, um, paperwork for litters, things like that. So I figured I'd take the time and kind of go through my knowledge and everything I know when it comes to getting your dogs registered, getting paperwork for your dogs, litters, so on and so forth. So um, I'm gonna just kind of cover everything when it comes and, and, and how you do everything, of course. So when it comes to registration uh, and getting paperwork for your dogs, essentially what you're doing, what you're paying for is for a registry. There's multiple registries out there. I have a few here. Um, there's, there's ABKC, there's AVR, there's UKC, there's AKC. Um, there's so many different registries. There are so many. And what these registries essentially are, they really just record and document the lineage of your dogs. So say your dog came from another dog that came from another dog that came from another dog, if that makes sense. Um, so all they're doing really is just documenting the lineage, um, saying that, yes, this dog came from this dog and this dog came from this dog and this dog came from this dog, so on and so forth, dating back to whenever the um, lineage started or when the registry had started and they started documenting dogs in that particular bloodline or pedigree or whatever you want to call it. So there's different registries and there are some registries that um, they've been designed for specific breeds. Like I'll give you an example with ABR. Um, ABR was designed for the American, you know, it, it's, it's called the American Bully Registry. It was designed for the American Bully. You have the UKC, which has been around for quite some time now. And UKC is just the United, United Kennel Club. Um, there's a lot, there's way, way, way more registries than what I'm showing you right now. Um, so when you purchase, you know, your dog from a breeder or whatever the case may be, or maybe you're a breeder yourself and you're deciding what registries you wanna go with, um, there's, there's so many, so many, so many to go with. So it all depends on your breed. Um, and, and whatnot and what papers are readily available for you with your particular breed because it's a lot nicer um, Say for example, your dog has paperwork with UKC is nicer to um, It's better to kind of stick with UKC because they'll you'll have all the lineage and all the parents and so forth and so on so that you can show that with your future generations when you sell those puppies and um, you can see the paperwork and the people can see those parents and their parents and so on and so forth. So if you go with another registry that your dog isn't registered with, um, you might be able to show them the paperwork from your other registry and they'll honor that and they'll um, put all the, um, the parents and grandparents and great grandparents onto your certificate for your dog. Some may not, it'll, it all depends, but anyway, so when you get your dog, right, most of the time, if you're getting a puppy, whatever the case may be, you're going to get some paperwork like this. And what it is, is it's just, um, it's, it's an application, um, to register the dog under your particular name. Well, under the name that you want to name the dog, um, customarily when you get your paperwork from the breeder that you got your dog from, you're usually going to put their kennel name and maybe like an abbreviation or something like that on the paper. And then you'll put the name of the dog. It's giving credit to the person that produced the dog. I don't see a lot of people do this in the dog game as much anymore, but this is that's traditionally what's supposed to be done. So you'll fill out the paperwork that the breeder gives you and you'll mail that in to whatever registry it is. And within some time, they will send you your proper documentation and this is what it looked like from like UKC for example I'm gonna blur out anything that you guys you know my personal information but you'll get something along the lines like this 
So, um, and then that is your permanent registration. And that is a certificate for the dog. What it will do is most of them, and you can pay an additional fee for like, um, instead of getting three generations or four generations, you might be able to see like 12 generations on the pedigree. Um, and essentially all that it comes with is like a pedigree. And I don't know if you guys can see, but this is what a permanent registration looks like. After you get your paperwork, like I said, your your um, your application for permanent registration, your temporary, you fill out all the information, you put the name of what you want the dog to be, your information, your address, stuff like that. And then this is what you get here. And like I said, it'll have all the dogs that are in the pedigree and are registered through that particular um, reg registry. So now this is the dog's permanent papers. This is also, I guess you could say like a proof of ownership as well. What you would need to do if you ever sold the dog is you fill out the back and they give you all the information um, so that the person now, the, the, the new person, it's almost like a title or a deed. Um, now the new person can fill that out. You fill your portion out. That person will mail it in and then they get the new papers for the dog. And um, you know, this gets sent in so you no longer have papers for the dog. You no longer own the dog. So that's pretty much how it goes for most of the registries when it comes to registering your dog. They all have, and like I said, I have a whole bunch here. I have a whole bunch here to show you guys. So they all essentially are the same. Um, some have gotten a little bit more high tech now and you could do it online. Some are still living in the stone ages. Um, that's where um, we did wind up creating a registry and it's called DCR, Digital Canine Registry. And um, this isn't to promote it or anything like that. I mean, um, I'm gonna do a separate episode completely on it, but that's why we created Digital Canine Registry because we felt like the, the old physical paper way is kind of a little outdated and I mean, we still offer it, but um, some registries now that for example, don't utilize um, the paper as much and um, you can register with Digital Canine Registry and you could get a digital copy um, and it, it just stays on the phone. So this is a good example of that. Um, not having to deal with physical papers. Cause if I show you this binder, this is filled with papers of dogs, filled with papers of dogs um, that I've had. I think I got another binder in the back over there somewhere. So it gets crazy. So anyway, that's pretty much how it works when it comes to registering a dog. Now let's just say um, you have a litter now. There's another form that will ask all the questions, all the documentation. Um, it pretty much just will ask who's the mother, who's the father, the the sire, um, the father dog, who's who's his owner, who's the dam's owner, the mother's owner, um, as well as when the breeding took place, things like that. You'll fill that out and you'll say how many puppies were born. You mail that into whichever registry it is and you'll go ahead and you'll get all the application for permanent app registrations. So you'll get, if you have five puppies, you get five individually of these and you give it to each person um, who gets a puppy off of your litter. Or you just may, or you may just register them for yourself, whatever works. But that's pretty much how those registrations work. Um, and there's multiple registries. So the other cool thing too, is like, I have a dog here, for example, um, right here. She's registered with two different registries. She's registered with UKC and she's registered with ABR. So it's nice for the people who maybe prefer ABR or UKC or both. This is what's considered a dual registered dog where she's registered with two different registries. She could actually be registered with three different registries. You could register the dog with 10 different registries if you wanted, it doesn't really matter. I, I usually stick with two registries um, where I'm at at this point. But um, you could have your dog registered with however many registries you want and it's not, it doesn't conflict with anything. It doesn't really matter. So my whole thing though, is that a registry is really in its essence, just document, it's just documenting the lineage. So for me, some people kind of get really caught up in the prestige of certain, certain particular registries names and whatnot but some registries have kind of gotten really bad with getting your paperwork back, terrible customer service, things like that. So some of these registries I no longer use. There's some other ones that I won't even come near that I haven't even mentioned. But to be honest, the only registries that I do now is DCR and ABR because those are the only two that I find necessary 
ABR honors my paperwork with UKC and ABKC and the other registries that I used to use. Um, because at the end of the day, some people prefer like a UKC because that particular registry has been around for a lot longer. In my opinion, um, at, all it's doing is documenting the lineage. I've never had a customer come to me and tell me they didn't want to buy my puppy because of the registration of what, of what the dog was registered to. Now, this may vary from breed to breed because if you're into like show dogs, for example, or um, you know, you're, you're, you're in different classes with different dogs and you can only show that dog with that particular registry because some of these registries have shows and things like that, um, then that may be a deal breaker for you. That's something to be mindful of is the, your clientele, for example, either you as a purchaser or you as a seller, as a breeder, um, are your clients looking for a particular registry? That's all things to be mindful of. So I would do your homework. Um, but like I said, I use ABR, American Bully Registry. I, I breed exotic bullies and they accept that. Um, I, I used to use like UKC and things like that, but it's really just a documentation of the lineage as well as, like I said, I use DCR. Um, we created that and then I love that because then I got rid of all these papers. But um, I mean, there's honestly, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. There's a lot of upselling when it comes to these registries. That's why I don't get crazy with it. Like I bought this binder from the registry and it was an extra like $35 or something like that. You guys got ripped off. Um, there's, uh, you can buy like ID cards you know, for your dogs, if you go to a show, um, it's supposed to be quicker and easier access. You guys got ripped off. I've never had to, I never even used it. You guys got ripped off. Um, so yeah, so honestly, in my opinion, um, that, that's pretty much as self-explanatory as I can say. Some of the registries, they allow you to, like I said, do stuff online and things like that. But um, it's really, a lot of them are really outdated and it's really just think of it as, the best way to explain it is like a title of a car. Um, someone has the, the, the title and then they just sign it over to you. Um, you have to send that in to motor vehicle or you have to go to DMV in person. A lot of these registries you can't go in person, so you have to just mail them. Um, and what I highly recommend, here's a pro tip, a pro, 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 pro tip. Take a picture and get the tracking number when you send these paperwork out to these registries. Because some of them will claim that they never got your paperwork and now your paperwork is missing and now you have to fight to show ownership of the dog because you got it from a breed or whatever. And now you have to have him get the request the paperwork so then he can come to you, you guys can sign it and you can send it back out again. This will save you a humongous headache. So just take a picture of the paperwork so then you always have that so you can send that to the registry if they lose it, as well as get a tracking number. Pay a little bit, you know, a few dollars, I think it's five dollars or whatever. Uh, maybe even less, but get the tracking when you mail it to these registries. So then if they ever lose it, because they get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of paperwork every single day. So between those things, that's a super pro, pro tip. That's what I do now. And even when it comes to getting paper sent to me, some of these registries, they will send you your paperwork without tracking if you don't pay their premium price. You guys got ripped off. So I would recommend at least getting the tracking. So if it gets lost, they'll send you another hopefully ideally so anyway guys um i hope this information was helpful um if you if i left anything out drop a comment down below and i'll definitely do like a part two or something like that but i just wanted to cover um you know basics on on dog registration dog papers things like that i don't think it's something you need to go crazy over i don't think that um i think some of these larger registries have become rather unfair um, with how they conduct business and it's not it's not so much about the customer anymore and it's more about the money for the registry in my opinion so that's why like i said i really keep it to a minimum of the registries that my dogs are signed up with um but i hope this information was helpful hope it was useful um if you did make sure to like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next episode of breeders hacks